Hi there. This is a, a three grouping of videos on air tightening of this Suzuki bass harp. I'm going to explain air tightening to you. I would imagine you're going to see some things that you've never seen and you're going to learn things that you didn't know anything about. So to begin with, I'm just going to take my time. I'm going to walk you through air tightening, how we're going to do it. Okay. Well, let's talk about air loss. How does air loss happen? Well, it's when there's a gap between the parts. Now, I'm putting aside right now problems where the reed plate might not mate to the comb. I don't see those. And I'm going to put aside reed gap issues. That's a whole other discussion. I'm just talking about the air tightness at the mouthpiece assembly. Okay. So we got, in this case, on this harmonica, three parts. We have a black plastic comb, okay? And this was ABS injected. And it has a top surface. Okie doke. That's one part. We have a slide. And we have a mouthpiece. Now, the way that this game is played is that any time that there's space between any of these three, you got an air tightness issue. So, let's go over them. If the comb top is not absolutely flat, air can scoot out between those little gaps. So the comb must be absolutely flat. I'll show you how to do that. We're gonna do it with a stone here. I'll say hi to my dog. She comes over and she helps me. She'll sit here and guide me on what to do. She's a good dog. Okay. We, we discussed the comb, okay? Which actually, the part that counts is up on the top of these checkered sections here. Now you can see in the light what I'm talking about, that face, okay? Then you got a slide. Well, if the slide were bent, that could create a problem or if there was a chop in it, but slides normally don't have any problems. Um, and here's another one. This is the mouthpiece, and the part that affects air tightness is the underside. Let us look together at the construction of this. And this will mean something to us very soon. If you take a look at the way this is made, there's that part there that the slide runs on. And then there's that little lip. You see it? It's just a little lip. It's not even a millimeter. It's a teeny little lip. Okay? And you have um, that lip, and there's one down here. Why? Because the slide runs between those two little lips. Okay, great. Now, These two little lips here and here, they sit on top of the harmonica. Okie doke. And they make a gap into which you can put a slide. Okay, we've gone over the parts, okay? Now let me show you the problem. First of all, the reed um, uh, the, uh, the comb is not flat. 
That I know, I've already tested it, so I'm gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna fix that. But this is a much more interesting challenge and a little bit more rare that you'll ever hear it discussed. This is, I think I'm the only one in the world that does this, but I could be wrong, I mean, who knows? Okay, well, if I put these pieces together, like I just did, okay, and I hold them down with down pressure that's approximately equal to what a screw can do, and I wiggle the slide up and down, slides going up and down, what that means is that the clearance between the bottom side of the mouthpiece and the top of the comb is wrong. It's too big because when I set the pieces all together, there's goopy slop. Hear it? Maybe you can see it. That's a lot. Okay, I ask you, what do you think the solution may be? Well, you're not going to make the slide thicker. Uh -uh. That would work, but you're not going to do that. You don't want to change this because it's metal and it's plated. You could go in and grind down that little lip, right? That is hard to do properly. Or you could change the shape of the comb right where the little lips run on it and bring down the comb right on the edges so that the mouthpiece could seat down lower on the comb. And that's what we're gonna do. Now, <coughs> that's called lapping. L-A-P-P-I-N-G. And we're gonna show you how to lap. It is done with a fine pumice compound. I use Colgate regular toothpaste because it's hygienic and it doesn't stink and it is a very, very fine pumice. And I'm gonna put a little bit of that pumice on the edges of the comb and do this and I'm gonna go over by the sink and I'm gonna take the comb sides down eight ten thousandths of an inch. You can't go too far, because then the slide will bind. But my point to you is, it's not just that the comb be flat. The specification of the distance between the mouthpiece and the comb must be such that it's snuggish to the slide. That's too big. Now I gotta save room for a little bit of slide oil. That's about one to one and a half ten thousandths of an inch. And I gotta make sure that I'm duplicating about what the down pressure is on the screws, right? The mouthpiece screws, because they apply down pressure, so you don't do this lightly when you test it. You put the same down pressure on that the screws would, and you then duplicate what the harp does when it's all put together. I know this is some strange stuff, but boy, does it work and it makes a lot of difference. So let's get started on the actual work and let's begin with um, flattening the uh, comb. I hope you're enjoying this. <laughs> 